Hey guys, today I'm gonna to show you the easiest way to integrate our lead capture chatbots inside of BotPress with make.com and Zapier. Let's do it. All right, so in this video, we're gonna do three main things. Firstly, I'm gonna show you how you can build a very rudimentary lead capture chatbot inside of BotPress where we can capture the data points from our potential leads. Secondly, I'm gonna show you how we can integrate BotPress with make.com so that we can then send that captured data out to either our CRM or whatever database software we're using to manage our leads. Lastly, I'm gonna show you how to do the exact same thing by integrating BotPress with Zapier, just in case you're using Zapier as your no-code automation tool. All right, so without further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, so I'm inside of BotPress. Let's start off here by building out a very rudimentary lead capture chatbot. Okay, so I'm just gonna right click here and add a standard node. And I'm gonna name this, I don't know, something like uh, lead capture. And I'm gonna drag in a text card, and this is just gonna be the first message that our lead sees when they start messaging with our chatbot on our website. So it'll say something like, hey, let me get some of your information, or something like that, okay? And then I'm gonna start asking my lead different questions um, based on the data that I wanna capture. So I'm gonna capture, I don't know, maybe a name, maybe an email, things like this that you want to know from your leads that you can then store in your CRM or over in your database that you're you know, using to manage all your leads. All right, so for example, I'm going to first drop in a raw input card here and I'm gonna ask my user, what is your name? Okay, now very importantly here is we want to store whatever our leads answer is to this question. We wanna store that in its own variable. And we wanna do this because we're going to use these variables that we're storing this information in to then send out to make.com and Zapier later in the video. So we need to create these variables so we can capture all these data points. So to do that, I'm just gonna create a variable here and I'm gonna call it uh, something like first name or something like that. So whatever the lead types in as their name, as a response to this question, I will store in the variable first name and then we can call that later on in the video, okay? I'm also gonna ask them what their email address is. So I'm gonna say, what is your email? I'm gonna store that to its own variable, again, so we can reference it later on and send it out to Make or Zapier, whichever one you're using. So create a variable there. And I'll do one more, and I'm just making this up. You can do whatever you want here based on whatever data you're trying to capture. But uh, let's say, hey, what is your favorite movie okay and I'm gonna create one more variable there called favorite movie just like that okay so let's come here and actually connect our start node to our lead capture node and then let's test this out and just see where we are so I'll say hey it says hey let me get some of your info what is your name I'll say Alex okay so Alex was just stored to my variable first name what is my email I'll say Alex at yahoo.com Perfect, that is being stored in my email address variable. And what's my favorite movie? I'll say Interstellar. All right, so cool. So we're capturing all our data points, we're storing them in variables. How do we then send all that data inside those variables out to make.com? Okay, so step number two is I'm going to add another card here. And this time I'm gonna drop in this execute code card. All right, and now this is where we're going to drop in the custom code that we're going to use to send our variables out to make.com, all right? Now, if you don't know how to code, don't worry about it. I don't either. I'm gonna have this custom code that I'm pasting in right now, right here, down in the description below, so that you can just copy it and paste it right into your own project. Now, there's only two different areas that you're gonna have to tweak that is not gonna look identical to mine. The first is this section right here where we're storing our lead data, all right? Now, as you can see, I have three different lines here and these correspond to the three data points that I'm collecting back in step number one. All right, so you can see I have a name item, an email item, and a movie item, and I'm setting those equal to my first name variable, my email address variable, and my favorite movie variable that I set up in the first step. If you have named your variables different than mine, you're gonna wanna put those names right here at the end of these items, okay? So that's very important. Now, if you have more data points that you're collecting, not just three, let's say you're collecting four, well, you're gonna wanna add those in here. So let me show you how you can do that, and then I think you'll understand the logic here. So let me come back to my chatbot. I'm just gonna make up one more raw input card, 
just like that to collect more data from our lead. So I'll just ask, I don't know, what is your favorite color? I'll create a variable and this one will be called favorite color, just like that. And now I'll come back to my custom code. And since I want to now also send that favorite color variable out to make.com, I'm gonna wanna add this in right here. So I'm gonna add a comma, drop down, and I'm just going to essentially copy this down, get rid of that comma, and then I'm gonna call this, I don't know, color. And then instead of favorite movie variable, I'm gonna update this to my favorite color variable, and you can see it pre-populates here since I've just created that variable. All right, so now I'm sending these four variables, first name, email address, favorite movie, and favorite color, I'm sending those to make.com. So that is the logic there. So any different variables that you've made, put them in right here. Now, the second thing that you're gonna want to change in your custom code as compared to mine is this section right here, okay? So this whole section right here is essentially where we send our lead data to make.com. And to do this, we're gonna have to go to make.com right now and create something called a webhook. A webhook is essentially just a bridge, just the way we link botpress to make.com. And we do that by posting in a unique webhook URL right here between these two apostrophes. So essentially we need to give botpress an address to send all of our lead data to. So to do that, let's hop into make.com and we're going to add a module here called webhooks, custom webhook. I'm gonna hit add. And I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to say uh, BotPress Webhook. And I'm going to hit save. All right. And just like that, it just gave me this URL right here, which is our webhook or, or address that we want to send all of our lead data to. So I'm going to copy this to the clipboard. I'm going to come back to BotPress. And whatever URL you just got there from make.com, you want to paste in right here like that. Okay. So essentially what this is saying down here now is, Okay, we're going to post, we're gonna do an API call to this webhook, and we're gonna send our lead data to that address. Now, there's one last thing we need to do here before this is fully integrated with make.com. And that has to do with this property right here called no code success, all right? So at the very beginning of our custom code, we have a property here called no code success that we set to false, all right? But if we are able to successfully make our API call to this webhook, then we override that property to true, and we do that so that we can trigger the next step in our chatbot. So let me show you what I'm talking about. I'll come back here. The last thing we need to do is we need to add in an expression to the end of our lead capture node, which essentially will tell our node that it's done and we can route it to the end, all right? And our logic here is essentially that no code success property. If that equals true, then, then we can end our, our chatbot conversation. Okay. So back to my custom code here. If we're able to successfully send all of our lead data to make.com by using this webhook, then we override our property as true, which then will route to the end of our conversation if it's true. If it's not true, if we fail somehow, then our no code success property will stay as false and we'll get an error. All right, that is how it's working. You don't need to know that. All you really need to know is you need to add in all your variables here and you need to add in your own custom make.com webhook right here. Now, let's come into make and let's hit okay here and let's run this, all right? And we just wanna make sure that this webhook is now working. So I'll come back to BotPress and I will open up a fake little chat here. I'll start a new one. I'll say, hey, it asks me, what's your name? I'll say, Alex, what's my email? I'll do the same one, alex at yahoo.com. What's my favorite movie? I'll say Interstellar. What's my favorite color? I'll say green. Okay, so theoretically now, all four of those data points should now be pulling in to make.com via this webhook, and it looks like it is. Perfect, so we're pulling in all this data here. Now I'll show you what we can do now that we're pulling in this data. This will change for you, but let's say I wanna send all this data, all this lead data to Airtable because that's where I'm managing my leads. Well, then I can just come in here 
connect my Airtable account, link to my Airtable database, which I have set up over here with those four lead data fields, link to my table, and then I can just map each data point to the data point in my record. So name can be name, email can be email, favorite movie is just my movie item that I set up in my custom code, and then color, color, just like that. And I'll hit okay. So now if I run it, and I come back here to bot press and I do one more, we can just make sure that I'm sending my lead data out to Airtable. Now again, you could be using a CRM, you could be using HubSpot, Pipedrive, Google Sheets, wherever you're sending this data, it doesn't matter, it's the same thing. We just gotta get that data into make.com. So I'll say, hey, what's my name? I'll say, Brian. What's my email? Brian at yahoo.com. What's my favorite movie? Star Wars. Favorite color? Blue. And I'll come back to make. Looks like we're good to go. And I'll come over here to Airtable and boom, you can see that we are pulling in that lead data into Airtable. So that is how you integrate with make.com. How do we do it for Zapier? All right, so to do it for Zapier, it's basically the same exact thing. We're gonna come to our custom code here and we're just gonna change one little thing. Instead of having a webhook from make.com, we're going to replace this webhook with a webhook from Zapier. So to do that, I'm gonna to come to Zapier or Zapier, however you wanna say it. I'm gonna create a zap and my trigger is going to be webhooks by Zapier. I'm gonna choose an event and I'm just gonna do catch hook. Hit continue. I'm gonna hit continue here. And then it's gonna give me my URL, similar to make.com. I'm gonna hit copy. I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna paste it in right in between those apostrophes. And then we should be good to go. So I'll hit test trigger. And as we're testing, I'll come back to bot press and I'll do another fake conversation. I'll say, hey, what's my name? I'll say, Nick, what's your email? Nick at yahoo.com. What's my favorite movie? I'll say Wedding Crashers. And what's my favorite color? I'll say yellow. We'll come back to Zapier and we'll test. And boom, you can see we're pulling in that data right here and we're in really good shape. So I'll hit continue. I'm gonna send this to Airtable just to finish the process and stay consistent. I'm gonna create a record, hit continue. I link my Airtable account or wherever you're sending this, could be to a CRM, could be to Google Sheets. It doesn't matter, it's all the same thing. Um, I'm gonna hit bot press lead capture, choose my table and Airtable, and I'm gonna map my fields. So you can see I'm pulling in my name, I'm pulling in my email, I'm pulling in my favorite movie, and I'm pulling in my favorite color. So it's very similar to make.com, you just need to go grab that different webhook and link it up back to bot press. Other than that, it's the exact same custom code. Oops, okay. I'll hit continue, I'll hit test, and we'll see if this is now sent to Airtable. Okay, looks like it was. I'll come to Airtable and boom, that's it guys. We are now sending lead data that we are capturing inside of BotPress from our lead capture chatbot to Airtable or to our CRM or whatever we're using via the use of make.com and Zapier. So that's it for today's video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, that custom code will be down in the description below. I will also have links out to make.com, Zapier, BotPress, all of the above, so that you can easily get to those tools and get these lead capture workflows set up perfectly. If you guys like this video, go down and smash that like button for me. That would be awesome. If you wanna see more videos like this in the future, consider subscribing. That would be even more awesome. If you have any questions, get down in the comments and let me know. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you guys so much for being here. Your comments mean the world to me and I'll see you all in next week's video. Peace.